Welcome to my world. Two escargot, pate, frise, two green salads. Okay, man, it's up here. Lamb chop, steak frites. Shouldn't you be doing something? Two faux filet and a pepper steak. Come on, make the dessert. Chocolate tart, please. As a cook, tastes and smells are my memories. And now I'm in search of new ones. So I'm leaving New York City and hope to have a few epiphanies around the world. And I'm willing to go to some lengths to do that. I am looking for extremes of emotion and experience. I'll try anything. I'll risk everything. I have nothing to lose. Salvador. The African heartland of Brazil. Ooh, la, la. It's where religions, cultures, traditions come together to create something really special. It's about magic, it's about food, it's about music, it's about people. It's a whole different world here. But let's start someplace a little more familiar. Maybe you're asking yourself, gee, I'm a stranger in town. Where do I find a good place to eat in country X? Well, here in Salvador, like in just about every other cool country, if you're looking for a good meal, go directly to the market. Hang out and eat without fear. I have every confidence we're going to find like good stuff to eat here. Whoa, watch your back. Now, is it my sunglasses or what I had to drink last night, or is that an incredible color over here? Hmm. You know, you see certain constants when you travel around the world like I do. Like, you see all these ready-made kits of the nasty bits. Keep that knife away from me, dude. Little packets geared towards people who don't have a lot of money, go to the market and get it. I mean, you'll see like 75% of the stuff that seems to be sold here in the meat department are the good parts. The guts, the heads, the, the, the hooves, the snouts. Looks like a windpipe to me. Blood cake, which some of our older students will recognize from the Portugal shell. Fried shrimp, palm oil, chili peppers, coconut. Classic elements of Bahian cuisine. Let's find out where the snacks are at. Ah, oh, yes. Tasty mystery bits on a wheel rim grill. I mean, come on, what's not to like? It looks like some sort of a chicken, some mysterious looking sausage, and a bit of beef or beef part or organ meat. I mean, come on, that looks good. Not only is the grill happening, but I've managed to make a new friend or two. Stay right there. We have two coca. Whenever I'm on the road, I like to export American values whenever possible. Okay, I got sausage, I got some sort of, uh, I don't know, one of your lesser cuts of beef. Oh, of course, wait. I'm gonna hook up my little friend here. I hope he's hungry. He's hungry? Good guys. You share with him too, okay? Arados. Sausages and mystery meat. It's a beautiful thing. And I've got two new friends and bodyguards. Hey, I'm building a crew already. All right, the wheel rim grill was cool. But I'm ready to dig a little deeper. A lot of good stuff here. I'm having what I'm told is sort of a typical thing to eat around here, mokato. Mokato, as I understand it, is a soup type thing involving dried beef, leg, fresh beef, whatever that means. I, I suspect there's some nasty bits involved. Listen, how can you go wrong? It's, it's hot, it's liquid, it comes in a bowl. There are lots of locals sitting around eating it. It's gotta be good, right? To prime my palate for the main entree, my friends at the food stand hook me up with a bowl of beef broth-based porridge. Thank you. You get all your fried meat, your fresh meat, your nasty bits, you cook them in broth, haul out and serve. The broth then is thickened with manioc flour, become this porridgey, gruely, and very delicious sort of substance, which you can jack with a nuclear hot uh, salsa. Yeah, this is good. Just like in many other places, what was created by the very poor out of necessity is now a mainstay of the country's cuisine. But I digress. I believe there's some mystery meat to be had. Oh, yes. Pleasure is not always pretty. My old friend Jose, my uh, Portuguese boss back in Leal, he's gonna start heavy breathing when he sees this. Like, I don't even know what this, real, this piece is. Uh, I probably don't wanna know, but it's really good. I know you're out there, you're saying, huh, dude, how could he put that in his mouth? That looks nasty. Well, as every chef knows, that's where the flavor is. I pity the fool who doesn't like this. 
Oh, that's wonderful. It's kind of like pastrami, only different. Organ meat and beer. What's that beer buzz early in the morning that the Cheryl Crow song? There's no line about organ meat in that song, is there? Good, I like it. Thank you, my good man. Tonight, I'm going to witness my first candomblé ceremony, and I'm a little apprehensive. Much like Bahian cuisine itself, candomblé is a traditional African religion filtered through Brazil, which was for many years hidden beneath a veneer of Catholicism. The ceremony is taking place at the house of candomblé priest Bel Sum, where a new member will be initiated into the cult. Candomblé is a deeply felt religious ritual dating back hundreds of years, where members gather together to call the spirits to their aid. It's a mainstream element of Bahian culture. Through song and dance, members of the congregation encourage each other to enter a trance-like state to help channel spiritual energy. Bell serves as the spiritual leader and rather flamboyant master of ceremonies for the group. It's typical. Having said all of that, I have no idea what's going on here. I'm confused. I'm a little uncomfortable. And this thing goes on forever. Everyone around me has been swept up in some kind of transcendental frenzy. It's been said that sometimes even spectators get caught up in the outpouring of spiritual energy. And I gotta admit, with all this drumming and shrieking and rhythmic circular dancing, I'm starting to feel a little lightheaded. Note to self, avoid falling into a trance-like state at your next cult ceremony or keg party. Happily, when I come to, there's a heaping serving of post-ritual grub being passed around, an offering to the gods consisting of... Farofa, rice, beans, Okay, it's not the best meal I've ever had, but if it's fit for a deity, who am I to complain? I lumber, somewhat disoriented, back to my hotel with a belly full of food and a head full of African cult gods. Just another day on the job. It's another beautiful day in downtown Pelurino, the old colonial section of Salvador. I don't know about you, but whenever I nearly black out at a candomblé ceremony, I usually need something a little special to get me back into the swing of things. My method of choice, a good meal. If there's one chef who really characterizes the best of Bahian cuisine, by general consensus, it's agreed that Dada, who we're about to meet in a restaurant, Sariso Dada, da, is that person. She's the most famous cook in Brazil. She has a TV show. Politicians line up, clamor to get in. That I started cooking uh, her first place out of her house and has since expanded. It's mean, spectacular, spectacular success. Uh, you'd think that it would be, you know, a, a slick corporate setup upstairs by now. Still cutting like this. Dada is not just a brand name. She still cooks her meals, still invents, and oversees every detail. Notice her knife work, it's like mom. The blade against the thumb, you know, none of the professional knife technique, violating every known rule of French cooking. That's a good sign. But technique aside, it's the food, her food, that really sells this place. Her menu includes such Bahian favorites as redfish wrapped in banana leaf, crab salad, and the quintessential dish of Bahia, a seafood and coconut stew called a mokeka. Mokeka begins with diced onions, peppers, tomatoes, and cilantro. And like many Bahian dishes, includes the holy trinity of ingredients, shrimp, coconut, and a generous helping of fiery dende palm oil, infamous for wreaking gastrointestinal distress on unsuspecting tourists. A quick simmer on the stove and simple ingredients are turned into something spectacular. Much like mokeka, redfish and banana leaves is also a standard of Bahian cuisine. You know, where did it come from? Got fish, got traditional African ingredients, don't have refrigerator. Problem, they developed a method of wrapping the fish in the seasoning in banana leaf as a means of preserving the fish. And by solving the problem, you make something good. 
But before I get to the food, I want to take a crack at Dada's seemingly endless array of caipirinhas. I promised Dada that I would sample all of them. I'll have a uh, cashew uh, caipirinha, I think. Now, that's fresh cashew, cachaça, and I'm guessing sugar. Oh, yeah. All right, more. Jumbu, or something like that, or umbu. A little sweet for me. Pineapple. I haven't had pineapple. Maybe a little too Don Ho. I don't know. Mm. I think I'll have another one of these bad boys. Honey bubble. <clears throat> God, I'm drinking a lot of these things here. Next. Uh. Okay, before I wind up face down on the table, I think it's time for some food. Self dish of butter. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Beautiful thing. Oh, look at that. Mokeka. Looks like a skin oh, seed. my crab. First. Good. With so much before me, I decide to start with a crab salad and work my way up. Look, I love the crab coral. Look at this little piece of crab coral in there. The crab rope. Oh, that's fantastic. And texture, too. You got a lot of different textures going on here. Like this stuff, it's, it's, it's like eating sand, you know, but a delicious, delicious, magical sand. Whole different spectrum of flavors. All right, a quick deboning, and we're on a round two. The red fish and banana leaf. To accompany the fish, Dada has made a spicy sauce of chiles, dried shrimp, and more dende oil. These are not shy about flavor. Puts his reaches down your throat, grabs you by the heart, and yanks. Oh, yeah. That's great. The fish is incredible, but I can't hold out any longer. I've been gaping in wonder and anticipation at that beautiful mokeka for too long. Oh, yeah. Look at that color. Is that psychedelic, delicious, or what? Look at that. Oh, tell me that's not pretty. Tell me that's not gorgeous. Incredible. But this stuff ain't for the faint of heart. It packs some serious heat. Sweating. Ooh. Full flop sweat. <coughs> heat. Uh, of course, there's only one remedy for some powerful thirst around here. Now, this is a passion fruit caipirinha. Slimy with little, little chewy, delicious seeds that go popping right up into your brain. Oh, yeah. You've never, you've never tasted anything like it. It's magic. I've always felt that food at its best is a reflection of the person who made it. Thank you. And an afternoon at Ceriso de Dada is an extension, a reflection of the woman herself, her personality and her passion. Another example of the magic that seems to be everywhere down here. In the streets, the music, the people. Hopefully just not in my lower intestine. Okay, so it's been great traveling around Salvador, trying spicy foods, but let's not forget that we're about a block away from the equator. Obviously, it gets hot down here. So in the interest of remaining upright, it makes sense to hit their best local ice cream shop. There's just one problem. Not an ice cream set of a guy. But I should be a good host. Then give the Food Network people what they want. Deep insights. When I'm in a new town, I can't ever leave it without trying a festive medley of regional ice cream flavors. Off-the-cuff comments. You should shower more. A choice selection of personal memories. Ah, uh, happy memories of Carvel as a child. Ah, uh, the history. That winning play in the softball game. The tradition. First A on my report card. Oh, if these walls get tough. Actually, I, I didn't have any of those things in my life. And in addition to that, I can't even read this damn menu. I'm lost. Being a resourceful Boy Scout, I get some help from the locals. Hopefully I won't be the lab rat for some new specialty called spleen, almond chip, or kidney swirl. I have no idea what we're talking about or what I'm eating, but it's good. I'm enjoying it. Okay, fashion fruit. Ah, God, I like Jackfruit. Jackfruit, oh yeah, good, good, I like jackfruit. Though I'm actually enjoying some of these flavors. Mild durian. That's good. Citrusy. Maybe this wasn't a bad idea after all. Well, that's great. And then I get the preschool special. Mangava. This is like sticky. It's like glue. Glue? That's one from the home team calling the flavor processed horse hooves. It doesn't taste like glue, but 
it's... It does kind of. I've sniffed this stuff, I've just never eaten it. So playing it safe, I decide on burnt coconut and chocolate. Beautiful thing. No problem there, right? Wrong. I'm gonna go up and wander. And perhaps share some thoughts on my ice cream. Not even remotely good. Oh, yeah. Oh. Two of my favorite scenes in one. Ice cream and deep thoughts. This is harder than it looks, folks. Oh, God. I don't taste coconut. I don't taste burnt. I don't taste chocolate. It stinks. <laughs> now, let's be honest. Well, at least I can enjoy the fine tropical weather, right? Got uh, add a little sunstroke to the mix. Along with the pain, boredom, humiliation, and general witlessness of this scene. Not to mention the thoroughly worthless ice cream. It's early in the morning in Salvador. And while everyone is starting fresh, I can't quite put all the drumming and voodoo from the other night out of my head. So I'm heading down to the beach. The beaches in Bahia mean more than blankets and suntan oil. Pack an appetite. So I settle in at my table, sample the refreshments. Perfect. Peruse the menu. Oh, good, helpful pictures. Note with displeasure and envy how much better looking the staff is than I am. Uh, uh. And get in the groove. The idea around here, you sit around, you drink beer, you get getting tan while you're chatting with your friends and drinking. It's not the object of the mission unto itself. It's to have a good time on the beach. Food tends to find you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ever have a cheese sickle? That's right, cheese on a stick, toasted over a pot of coals. I'm starting to get some traffic here. Beads? Eh, what the hell? Yeah, good. That browning cheese over there is putting me in a festive mood. Ah, moment. You've ever had onion soup? All that crispy, crunchy, wonderful stuff on the outside? This is better. Oh, buying everything on the beach here. Ooh, what's that? I'm interested. Palmito? Con oh, sugar cane. All of this is one smack, one hell. I find it disturbing in a Freudian way. Now, my psychiatrist won't let me enjoy this. Oh, shrimp do. Obrigado. You don't see this on an American beach, right? Just sitting there, somebody brings you by some whole shrimp head on. That's good. So maybe you're thinking, OK, Tony, you've had a few nice snacks here, but what really separates this place from Coney Island? Oh, dude, quail egg lady. I've been waiting for this all afternoon. OK, yes, yes, please. Get, sell me your wares. Perfect. Come on, this is cool. Quail egg lady ever visit your beach? Yeah, I didn't think so. Salt. Oh, that's good. Oh, uh, yes, please, let me sample your nuts. Quanto. This is like a lifetime supply of turtle wax. One can. Perfect. You can pretty much sit here all day and people bring your stuff. If only all of life were like that. And another staple of Bahian beach life. Hunky waiters in funny hats. Uh-oh. If he calls me Gilligan, I'm running. Hello. Hello. OK, I know what I want. Yes, uh, for an appetizer, I'd like to not look like a shirtless Don Knotts next to a hunkasaurus over here. And uh, for my entree, uh, could you make this guy remove that hat? If he calls me little buddy, I'm out of here. Hopefully, I have a good meal coming. I just ordered from the restaurant some tiny little fish, head, bones, skin, everything intact. Roll them in flour and deep fry them. And I also got a whole roasted fish, which is also a good thing because, as we all know, fish on the bone is always better. If you can eat the whole fish, always a good thing. Oh, yeah. Oh, that looks really good. Obrigado. You know, tiny little fish. Head, bones, the works, dipped in batter in this case, and fried. And this, I'm deeply suspicious of, because it resembles tartar sauce, something I don't like. Wilson, my waiter, after deciding to change into something more casual, has been nice enough to offer me a lounge chair. 
right. He's, well, he's just been keeping track of how much beer that I've been drinking. The skipper's not so bad. Hello. Oh, Jesus, it's enormous. Ooh. What do we got here? Oh, yeah. Good. That's beautiful. This is the best. Carbon is a beautiful thing. You know, that crispy, crunchy, white, fleshy, oh, yeah. I really I don't understand people's fear of, of head and bones and fish. Anybody who's sitting there thinking, ooh, hooky, you're missing. You're missing the good stuff. It's all about flavor and texture. What do you mean, what do you want, baby food? You know, what's the worst thing that can happen here? You know, a little sunburn, headache tomorrow, maybe a little less than quality time uh, on the old thunder bucket that I, but hey, it's worth it. I've always wanted a sedentary lifestyle by the sea. Drinking heavily in direct sunlight, eating beach food. This is pretty much uh, my chosen state of uh, existence. Now, if I can just get the sound of that kooky drumbeat out of my head, I'll be fine. So here I am after a long day at the beach, soaking up the sun and drinking heavily. You know, same old swing and routine. After such a hard day at work, like most true Bahians, I've discovered the joys of Akaraje, which is yet again another transplant from Africa. Akaraje is bean paste that's been infused with vatapa, which is a paste made from dried shrimp, tomato, and seasonings. The whole thing is blended together and fried in a swimming pool of dende oil. Every mouthful, by the way, is about 9,000 calories. It's a heart attack waiting to happen. One, uh, it's kind of like a falafel sandwich, but in this case, the falafel is the sandwich. They slice it right up the middle, fill it with a little dried shrimp and some salsa, and you're good to go. Da, 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 da. Mm. It's not that it doesn't taste good, it's just that with all that spicy dende oil, I know that each bite is bringing me closer to an inevitable gastrointestinal apocalypse. It's a broken man you see before you. You know, I wish there could be, you know, sort of simul cam of the inside of my stomach. My lower GI, folks, you don't want to see. My heart is sort of, you know, kind of, you know, working overtime, trying to squish much needed oxygenated blood through my now constricted, clogged arteries. Mm. Now that's a courage. So as I head, rather urgently, back to my hotel, two things come to mind. Number one, God help me, I hope that plumbing is in working order. And number two, Salvador is, without question, one of the great places on Earth. It's got it all. Sensuality, spirituality, and great food. Oh, and by the way, that candomblé business, I ain't buying it.